Well, who's ready to go back to Bedlam for the second time this season? From a sold out, jam packed Alamo Dome, it's the Valero Alamo Bowl between Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. Oklahoma, they had to deal with a high powered spread offense in Case Keenum and the Houston Cougars in the first round, and they dealt with that easily. They're going to have to go through much of the same here against Oklahoma State. And for the Cowboys, they took care of the Sun Belt champions, Arkansas State, but they struggled. They only won by 10 points, 20 to 10, in that ball game. But if they can hold the Sooners to 10 points as they did Arkansas State, they can come away with another victory. That's what they did last time these two met just a couple of weeks ago, a 44 to 10 victory for the Cowboys over the Sooners. And Broderick Brown, he's gonna try to do his part in Oklahoma State and Oklahoma. Bob Stoops, Mike Gundy, for the second time today, for the second time this season. What a matchup this one ought to be. We've already seen top-seeded LSU move to, to the Elite Eight. Top-seeded Alabama has moved to Elite Eight. Never before have so many top-seeded teams in the top four been able to roll through the playoffs like this and make it this far. Can Oklahoma State be added to that list? If they win, we already know that they are going to go to the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. That will be their bowl game of choice. Roy Finch opens it up with a two-yard loss on the handoff. I have never seen the Alamo Dome for this bowl game, the Valero Alamo Bowl, this jam-packed Oklahoma State. They won the Alamo Bowl last season against undefeated TCU and Landry Jones is going to get the completion and he'll get 15 plus. Trey Franks came in with that grab and for both of these teams as we've said in the past Oklahoma they've been to the BCS playoffs Three times have been to the Elite Eight all three times for the Cowboys as Landry Jones heads towards the end zone and they got the score. How about the Sooners on that opening drive? Dewan Miller comes down with the catch, takes the hit, and Jones gets up just in time to see the touchdown. But yes, Sooners, BCS playoffs three times. They've been to the Elite Eight three times. For the Cowboys, they've been here to the Elite Eight twice, the Final Four once. For the first time, one of these two teams will lose in the second round, and it only took Oklahoma two strikes to get into the end zone, and now Brandon Whedon, Justin Blackman, and that offense, they need to answer back. Wow. Oklahoma finds themselves on the ropes. As it's been well documented, struggling last week against Arkansas State, and that was in the Armed Forces Bowl for the Sooners, I mean for the Cowboys, no excuses. They went from Oklahoma down to TCU, down to Fort Worth for their opening round game, and then right over here to the Alamo Downs. I mean, they haven't traveled at all where Oklahoma, they had to go all the way to Orlando, Florida for their opening game, and then come all the way here to the Alamo Dome. So no excuses here for the Cowboys. Joseph Randall will take the carry and won't get much. So already third down and two for Whedon and company. But that'll be a first down. Right at the line, Brandon Whedon. Quick strike to get the first and move those sticks. Whedon will throw it on first down. Has his open man once again for four yards. They move the ball up to the 34-yard line. Bedlam part two. Who would have thought? Going at it once again. Whedon heaves the ball. Single coverage. Incomplete. I thought he was going to get that. He was looking for Tracy Moore on the catch, but couldn't get there. So now it's third and six. 
And you think about at this point, you just gotta get to the yellow line. Whedon gets it out there. No. Out of bounds. And Oklahoma Sooners, they come up with a stop. So, right now, everything going Oklahoma's way. Which is the exact opposite of what happened in Stillwater a couple of weeks ago. It only took Oklahoma two throws, or I should say two plays, to get the ball in the end zone. See how long it takes them here. Landry for seven yards, down to the 30, and here comes Oklahoma. Five wide receivers. Wide open, it's going to take them two plays again. Yes, touchdown. That's Kenny Stills. 14 points for the Sooners on just four plays. Absolutely unbelievable. And now Oklahoma State truly has some work to do here in the Alamo Dome. Landry Jones, Bob Stoops. We've been to the Elite Eight three times and three tries. We want to make it fourth for four, but more importantly, we want to make it towards the national title. Another two-play drive for the Oklahoma Sooners. It's cowboy time. They need to answer back. I have a feeling right now on this drive, you don't want to get too deep into a hole, especially knowing that last week your offense only able to score 20 points in the first round when you took on Arkansas State. Incomplete pass. That should have been caught. Brandon Whedon's wondering why it wasn't caught. Second down and ten. First down for the uh, Cowboys. And Randall on the carry for three. Second down and seven. Just past the 34, Oklahoma State, take it to Randall, he'll throw it, and is that the, not sure who that was, third down and three, another third down opportunity, we got movement. Ouch, that hurts, Martinez. Jumps, and now that backs him up to a third and long for the Cowboys. Whedon throws the interception. He was looking for Justin Blackman. And this is getting ugly right now. Picked off by Hurst. And it only took Oklahoma two tries to score from 80 plus yards out. How long will it take them to score right here? Roy Finch will fumble it. Oklahoma State gets it back. Oh, that's a big break for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. The fumble recovery by, uh, by Jamie Baltnick. The senior here from Texas. Yikes. So now, Oklahoma State catches a big break to get the ball back after the Brandon Whedon interception. 
Joseph Randall on the carry, juking and jiving for nine yards. Really nice run by Randall. The Valero Alamo Bowl. Oklahoma State again won this bowl last season against an undefeated TCU. Wide open, Justin Blackman to the house, and that's the Oklahoma State Cowboys we know. Brandon Whedon to Justin Blackman for 50 plus yards. And the Cowboys, with that fumble recovery, are right back in this football game. Brandon Whedon says yes. Pistol Pete. 59 yards for Justin Blackman. Quinn Sharp knocks through the extra point. And we still have a minute to go. We scored three touchdowns already. This is a lot different from the game we just saw down in Tampa between Florida State and West Virginia. Alright, so... It's Oklahoma's time now after they just gave the ball up on a fumble and now seven points for the, for the Cowboys off of that turnover. How does Oklahoma respond? And that's not a good start. They're going for a halfback slip screen. Out to Roy Finch. And it fell incomplete. Jazz Reynolds is in this game playing hurt though. The... All the weapons for the Oklahoma Sooners not quite there. No Ryan Broyles and injured Jazz Reynolds. And they've been making the most of it. They got by Houston. And they're up here on number three in the nation by seven. On third down and one, Jones. Horrible throw, incomplete. And Oklahoma State stands tough. They will get the football back. Fielded at the 20, brought up to the 30, and they're going to get it at the 45. Kellen Jones. Now here come the Cowboys. Great field position to get back in this football game after being down 14 points and Brandon Wheaton throws a dangerous pass right into a wall of Sooners, probably a lot lower than he intended to throw it. Second down and 10. They, de they decide to give it to Randall. This is Mike Gundy, says I'm not letting him throw it again after that. Third down and six now for Oklahoma. They got five wide, so watch out for this attack. Whedon, all day, open receiver, first down, Cowboys, yes, they are in to Sooner territory with the first down, down at the 44. Whedon puts his man in motion, the handoff to the inside, and he gave that one to... Wilson Yeoman, I believe, is at 86. One more play here for the third quarter. Randall with the run. He'll lose a yard. And we come to the end of the first. It's been quick. It's been high-powered. It's been an offensive explosion here in the Alamo Dome. Completely sold out. The fans are literally hanging from the rafters in San Antonio. It's Oklahoma State 7 and Oklahoma 14. Bedlam Part 2 as part of the Bowl Championship Series playoffs. Can number 3 in the nation move on just like number 1 and number 2? And head to the Elite 8. Not like that, they're not. That brings up a 4th down and... Oklahoma State will punt it away. And it bounces harmlessly to the back of the end zone. 
That's where the Sooners will get the football. Not in the back of the end zone. They'll get it up to 20, of course. Keep your eye on Roy Finch. They fake it to Finch. They're going to throw it. Open receiver, Kenny Stills, for the Oklahoma first down. And there come the Sooners. I think I see Jim Ross in the stands enjoying this game. I think I think there's a... Oh, incomplete. I think I see Toby Keith up there in the stands also. Lots of people out here for this one. This is the hot ticket here, the, Val the Valero Alamo Bowl between these two teams. Third and ten, Cowboys starting to get tough. Going deep down the field, batted away, incomplete, and Oklahoma State defense stands again. And I mean, no disrespect to the Huskies at 7-5, and five, but what game do you think is going to sell more tickets to the Alamo Bowl? Oklahoma State versus Oklahoma in a rematch? Or is Baylor going up against the Huskies, the 7-5 and five team? Honestly, the Alamo Dome, as we can see, sold out. Well, it's Cowboy time again. Defense holds after giving up the two initial touchdowns, that initial surge by the Sooners. Brandon Whedon to Tracy Moore for the first down. Now the Cowboys are trying to do some surging of their own to knock this one back up. Whedon. Looking, looking, throws it, it's intercepted. Whedon is making some questionable choices. He just threw it off the back of his foot. Intercepted by the Sooners. The second interception of the game. And you see Gundy to asking Whedon what was he thinking. Because he, I mean, he was scrambling around and then he just threw it off the back of his foot into double coverage. Looking for Justin Blackman. Easy interception and advantage time for Oklahoma. Try to get that 14-point lead back. Wide receiver sweep by Oklahoma, or tight end sweep to James Hanna. Screen play, incomplete. Oh, fumble! Wait a minute, that's a fumble! As, how's that not incomplete? Was that a backward pass? I guess they're calling it a backward pass, which would be a fumble. Bob Stoops going crazy. Maybe take a review at this, but... We've seen two Oklahoma fumbles, two Oklahoma State interceptions. Lots of mistakes on both sides and oh my goodness, Whedon and Justin Blackman and just like they did on the last fumble recovery, they are taking complete advantage. Give credit where credit's due at least to a struggling Oklahoma State team is that when they get the turnovers, they're taking advantage. Whedon looking towards the end zone, incomplete, was looking for Justin Blackman, and Blackman did kind of a Lambeau leap into the stands. Second down and ten for Oklahoma State. Whedon throws it, and he intercepts again, third interception thrown by Brandon Whedon. Incredible, what is going on down there? It was intercepted by Gabe Lynn. And Brandon Whedon has thrown three interceptions in the first half. And he's getting an earful again from Gundy. Saying we can't do this. The last time Brandon Whedon threw three interceptions, he did it twice. The last time he threw three interceptions was against Iowa State. They lost that game. Besides that, the last time 
Brandon Weeden threw three interceptions, was against Louisiana Lafayette. But keep that in mind, the last time Oklahoma State lost, and the only time Oklahoma State lost this season was when Brandon Weeden threw three interceptions. It's up to Landry Jones now. Try to take advantage of these Oklahoma State turnovers. They haven't done it yet. They're only leading by seven. They should be up by a lot more. Roy Finch takes the run. Roy Finch breaking free, and he will get the first. No, he won't get the first down. They're calling him short. It looked like he was over the line, but they're calling him short. Second down and ten. Pitch it to the outside to Finch. Finch with the stiff arm. Did he get the first down? He did that time. So first down Sooners. Green pass for five yards for Landry Jones in Oklahoma. And Bob Stoops calls the timeout. Brandon Whedon threw through through zero interceptions against Oklahoma last time these guys played. He's done absolutely nothing here today. On the other side, Landry Jones threw two interceptions last time they played, and he hasn't thrown any yet, so it's fourth and four. Cowboys hold him again. The, uh, the time run all the way down. I'm, I'm kind of surprised that maybe uh, Mike Gundy feels confident in his offensive ability, but to not use one of your three timeouts to stop the clock and get the ball back with some more time. But again, I guess save the timeouts and give Whedon a minute with three timeouts. This is a lot of time for this Oklahoma State offense. Let's look at game tracks. It's going to be a brutal one. Interception City for Brandon Whedon. He's thrown three of them so far. And him and Gundy have had some words on the sideline without a doubt. There's frustration building for this young quarterback. Here you see the numbers. 200, almost 200 yards passing, but again, for the senior. Three interceptions. Joseph Randall on the run. There goes Joseph Randall down to the 45 yard line. What a run that was from Randall. They will use their first timeout. Weedon will now throw it. They take Randall off the field to rest after that run. Out to Cooper for five yards, and he'll go out of bounds to stop the clock. The sophomore from Wichita, Kansas, Joseph Randall on that last run. How amazing was that? Second and five, 46 seconds to go. Weeding to throw it. It's his man over the middle, just short of the first down, so they'll call another timeout. Takes us to a third down and two. Isaiah Anderson came with a three-yard grab. They give it to Coop. No, that's, uh, the, that's, the, that's the backup. Jeremy Smith with the run. First and ten. And he drops it. Josh Cooper drops the football. Frustration starting to mount right now for Brandon Whedon. Whedon hits Blackman. Just short of the first down, but they are on the move. Third and two. Incomplete pass to Randall. Hits him right in the hands and falls to the ground. And they'll allow Quinn Sharp to attempt the 49-yard field goal. From the right hash, 
kick is up and the kick is no good. Quinn Sharp second miss from 49 yards this season and ooh, all the scoring in the first half in the second half not so much or in the <laughs> first quarter in the second quarter not so much but Landry Jones incomplete was looking for another big score what a game this has been Bedlam part two I'm telling you Add this to the Bedlam series, which Oklahoma and Oklahoma State does. It's all the games from all sports as part of the Bedlam series. And with three seconds to go, it's Hail Mary time from the 40. Jones to put it up. Here's the throw. End zone. Batted around. Incomplete. Well defended by Oklahoma State. And here in the Vier... V <laughs> The Valero Alamo Bowl. The Sooners and the Cowboys separated by just seven. What kind of halftime adjustments will both teams make? Not only Oklahoma State, but the Sooners, who scored on four plays, haven't scored since. Fans, we'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alamo Dome between Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. We are sold out. Fans are hanging from the rafters for Bedlam Part 2. The winner will go to the Elite 8 to take on either Cincinnati or Virginia Tech. And here's your game tracks. Brandon Whedon's thrown three interceptions in the first half. For the Oklahoma Sooners, they scored 14 points on four plays on the first two possessions. They've been held scoreless since then. Oklahoma State's only score of the game is was uh, Justin Blackman 59-yard touchdown. And here's where we are. Cowboy football. What kind of halftime adjustments has Oklahoma State made? Joseph Randall's been the bright spot so far of this team. Coming up with huge runs when his team needs him to. To take it through a second down and two. Out of the pistol it seems to be working. First down again for Joseph Randall. They move the ball to the 31. Batted down. The pressure came. They brought the blitz to Whedon. And Randall did his best to throw some blocks. But that's all he was able to get out. Second down and 10 for Oklahoma State. Incomplete pass. Third down and long. And there's been plenty of these for the Cowboys here today. Three for seven on third down conversions. They can make it a solid 50% if they can get the first down on this play. Weed in. They do get the first down. Made it to the waiting arms of James Hanna. My hand, that's a, I'm looking at the wrong side there. It's Isaiah Anderson. Or, excuse uh, me, I looked at the wrong 82. Second down in inches. I would not be at all surprised if we let Joseph Randall run it on second inches. They will not, so I'm very surprised. But, oh, it works out for him anyway. First down pass. And Oklahoma State on this opening drive, they're at the 35-yard line. Brandon Whedon wants it all. Single coverage. Touchdown, Cowboys. Justin, no. Not Justin Blackman. Tracy Moore from Tulsa, the junior, with the grab. And you want to talk about halftime adjustments? How about that for halftime adjustments? An 80-yard drive. Compliments of Mike Gundy and company. Quinn Sharp will make this one a 14-14 game. How about that? We are all tied up at 14 apiece. 
Halftime adjustments for Oklahoma State, without a doubt. But watch out for special teams, and the Sooners will answer back on special teams. A kickoff return for a touchdown by Roy Finch. And the Oklahoma State Cowboys, who have trailed for a majority of this game, as soon as they get back into it, they trail again. And now Brandon Whedon and this offense, who just led their team, on an 80-yard drive, they are worn down, they are tired, they need to step back onto the field and do it one more time. Game-changing play from a big game-changer in Roy Finch. They're going to have to go 75 yards this time on this drive for Oklahoma State. A little less than that, 74 yards. Can they do it again? Randall takes the carry for two. Incomplete pass. Oh, how is that not a penalty? Not only for pass interference, but for throwing somebody to the turf after it was an incomplete pass. I don't know how you don't call that if you're a ref. Third down and eight for the Cowboys. And they'll get the first down. How about it? It looked like it was Blackman that got it. Justin Blackman, who pretty quiet in the Arkansas State game, but he's making his presence known here today. We have a flag, and that's going to be a holding call. You can see it if you rewind. It happened right in front of Brandon Whedon. And those are the stupidest holding calls of all. When you get called holding because you held right in front of the quarterback, that's where everyone's looking. You can maybe get away with it in the pile, but when someone's by the quarterback, you throw a hold. That's just obvious and stupid. Whedon will make up most of that on the throw to Tracy Moore. He'll get eight. Brandon into double coverage. Did he get it? No, incomplete. And I think Whedon is down there yelling at number 28, and that's Travis Lewis, and he's the one that did that personal foul that didn't get called. Whedon's still upset about that. He was letting him have it. Third and 12. Better keep his emotions down, though. Maybe not. Get Brandon Whedon fired up if that kind of stuff happens. Pass completed to Michael Harrison. And it's a first and ten. Incomplete dropped. To take us to a second and ten. Could the Cowboys do it? Two drives to start this half off. They've got to be tired. But if they want to go to the Elite Eight, they need to fight through. Incomplete. And he was looking for Harrison again. It got knocked away. So third down and ten. You see they've been relatively successful. Better than 50% on their third downs. End zone. Incomplete. And Quinn Sharp will have to attempt a field goal. He's already missed once today, but that was from... 49 yards. This one will be from 41. And Sharp will get it. So that makes it a four point football game as the Oklahoma Sooners will get another shot at a kickoff. And here's the replay right through the upright.
The Sooners will have another opportunity here. Let's see. They're going to bring it out. That, that's Roy Finch. And Finch gets to the 35. So they stop him that time and for the first time in the third quarter. With two minutes to go. The Oklahoma offense steps onto the field and we'll see. Are they going to be cold after being on the bench for so long? Landry Jones. Oh, man. Maybe they will. How about that pass deflection from Justin Gilbert? Second down and ten. Cowboy defense has played well after those two opening drives. Landry Jones was pressured from the outside. He was able to get it out there to Kenny Stills. Or, excuse me, Trey Franks. For three, so third down and seven. On the option play, Roy Finch takes it and Roy Finch goes down. That's going to be a three and out. As Lowe came in with the tackle, Daytuan Lowe. And once again, time of possession for Oklahoma State. A tired offense, but maybe also a tired Oklahoma Sooners defense will step onto the field. They have trailed or tied this entire ball game. The Cowboys will get the ball. About 70 yards away. Interception number four. Thrown by Brandon Whedon. And that's his first time all season throwing four interceptions. It's picked off by Demontre Hurst. And that is the reaction of Cowboy fans right now. That pitcher tells it all. The Sooners are in striking distance of getting an easy six points. Screen play. They're going to lose a yard. And the Cowboy D bail them out once again. I'm more amazed at the fact that the Cowboys are still in this despite throwing four interceptions. Jones incomplete. How about the Cowboy defense coming up strong? Third and 11. 0 oh for 4. That's a bad stat for third down conversions. Looking for their first converted play here. From the outside, down goes Landry Jones. He is going to be sacked by Justin Gilbert, the sophomore from Huntsville, Texas. And that will bring on the kicking crew for the Oklahoma Sooners. The Michael Honeycutt. No, they're going to punt it. They don't have the confidence in Honeycutt, so... Right now, Mike Gundy is going down the line and shaking every single Oklahoma State Cowboy defensive player and saying thank you for keeping us in this game on these last couple of drives. Can Whedon get it together? Let Randall run it. He's been great. He'll get you three. Cut it down to a, a relatively short second down. Randall again, and Randall gets yanked down. No flag, so third and short. Randall takes it again, and he won't get the first. They take the ball out of Brandon Whedon's hand, which might be a smart decision. But they are unable to get the first down, and... With that, we come to the end of yet another quarter here in the Bowl Championship Series playoffs. It's 21 to 17 with one quarter to go. And it is a four point game and it is anybody's game at this point. One big play 
either side of the ball could bust this game wide open. The winner to meet Cincinnati or Virginia Tech in the second round, which would most likely be the Fiesta Bowl. Throws it into triple coverage. Well played by Lowe to knock it away. Because we say winner of this game most likely going to play in the Fiesta Bowl. If Oklahoma State loses, the next choice of bowl game would go to either would go to Stanford if they would win. They would take the Rose Bowl. If Stanford loses, next choice of bowl game would go to number five, Oregon. They would take the Rose Bowl. And Oregon's already in the Elite Eight, so that would leave winner of this game definitely, without a doubt, going to the Fiesta Bowl. Down there in uh, Glendale, Arizona. Third and eight, and the Sooners looking for their first conversion here on third down. Can they get it? Jones will go down. He'll be pressured. And he will get sacked. Number 72, and that's Christian Littlehead from Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Sack number two on the year for him. Another opportunity for Oklahoma State. This Cowboys team, they struggled against Arkansas State. They're struggling against Oklahoma. This is the drive that can define a season. For Oklahoma, for their defense, they only allowed... 10 points to the Sooners last time they played them. They've allowed 14 points here today. Seven on special teams. Second down and two. They let Cooper run it. Cooper breaks free to the 50. So back-to-back -back running plays. And that would actually be counting the last drive. Five running plays in a row. For Oklahoma State between Cooper and David Paulson. And now they're going to let Whedon throw it. He finds a receiver. First down. That's Justin Blackman. Here come the Cowboys. They're 40 yards out. They need a touchdown. Not a field goal. They are trailing by four. Three and a half minutes to play. And Paulson with the catch. For one yard. Now they're starting to let Whedon throw it. Four interceptions and yet they have a chance to take the lead. That's unheard of. The team can turn the ball over that much and still be in the game. Screen play. Out to Randall and now they'll huddle up. You see Randall is calling for it. I'm open, I'm open. No you're not. Boom. Here comes the Sooner Freight Train. Third down and 13. Bring that number up because they've been really good on third down conversions. We're not going to get to see it, but they've done well on third down conversions. Oh, how's that? That's got to be an offside without a doubt. Yes. Offsides play. I was going to say that would have been a crime if that didn't get called. He's the one that came in and forced the tackle. There you go, 50% on third downs. That's pretty well, or pretty good. I don't know what I'm saying. Whedon on third down, throws it. Open receiver, looking towards the end zone. Tracy Moore. No, that's not Tracy Moore. That is Anderson with the score. Isaiah Anderson. And after four turnovers, the Oklahoma State Cowboys have come all the way back. What a thrilling game we're seeing here in the Valero Alamo Bowl in the second round. The winner will go to Glendale to compete in the Fiesta Bowl in the Elite Eight. And the Sooners who have not scored a touchdown, an offensive touchdown since the first four plays of the football game are in danger. They trail the Cowboys. The Oklahoma Sooner defense has picked off Brandon Whedon four times.
yet. You see the score. The offense for Oklahoma unable to take advantage. Oh my goodness, and the kicker, Quinn Sharp, has to come up with a tackle. They nearly got burned by Roy Finch again on special teams. Look at him holding the ball, it's so weird. But Quinn Sharp, give that guy a medal or something coming up with a game-saving tackle. 39-yard line, and it's Sooner football, 2.40 to go. The handoff to Roy Finch, Roy French breaking free. And Oklahoma State has not been able to enjoy a tie or a lead for very long. Oklahoma just answering back, answering back. Down to two and a half to go. Jones, incomplete, was looking for Finch. Oh, they're getting loud here in the Alamo Dome. It is rocking. What a game. Bedlam Part 2. Hand off to Finch. Nothing there. He's going to lose a yard. So third and 11. Have they converted yet on third down? I don't believe so. Well, let's see what they do here. Third and 11. Landry Jones. First down. Looking for the end zone. Just short. Just short. Oh, my goodness. Trey Franks. I'm running out of breath on this one. 2.01 to go. They're at the five yard line. Roy Finch probably going to get the run with the way they're stacking the line. That's not Roy Finch. That was Brendan Clay. It was second down and goal. Moving the ball again are the Sooners. Clay takes it. Clay is in the end zone. And the Oklahoma Sooners, who haven't scored since the first four plays of their possessions, they are in the end zone, and they have once again reclaimed the lead over Oklahoma State, the winner, to go to the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. The extra point makes it a touchdown game. So for the Cowboys... It all falls on their shoulders. Two-minute drill. Three timeouts. Brandon Whedon, redeem yourself for what's been your worst performance of the year. Gundy, you see him. Telling his guys, get ready, get ready. This is the drive of your lives. Can Oklahoma make it four for four on Elite Eight appearances? Or will the number three ranked Cowboys lead a drive? Incomplete. I thought he got that. They're going to say it's incomplete. Maybe we'll get a review. Maybe not. Hey, it looks like we are not. So second and ten. Brandon Whedon. Throws it deep down the field. Incomplete. Third and ten. But this is where the Cowboys have shined, where the Sooners have not. Third down plays. The season is on the line. They hand it off to Joseph Randall, and he'll get the first down. How about the play call from Mike Gundy? to go with an inside draw with your season on the line on a third down and ten. Whedon throws it down the field. That's caught at the ten yard line. I don't know who caught that. Justin Blackman, I think, or Tracy Moore. I can't tell if that's a seven or a one. I think that was Justin Blackman. We're down to a minute to go. We're at the ten yard line. Here come the Cowboys. And we have flags. False start against Oklahoma State. But for Oklahoma State, that gives them a little bit of extra room to throw. They like that. They're at the 15-yard line. They trail by four. Joseph Randall, who's had a great day today, they let him run it. He'll get two. 
And they call a timeout with one minute to go. The Cowboys can sniff the end zone. It is right there. Whedon to his receiver. But nothing. No yards. Isaiah Anderson. Third and 13. Whedon throws it. End zone incomplete. Almost intercepted. So it all comes down to this. One play. The, the season is on the line for both teams on this one play. Here we go. Fourth down, 13. You don't need to score. But with where the first down is, essentially, a first down isn't going to happen. Here we go. Fourth and 13. This is for the season. Wheaton towards the end zone. Incomplete looking for Justin Blackman. And it appears that the Oklahoma Sooners are going to hang on for the victory. What a football game. Here comes Roy Finch. Can they force a fumble? No, they can't. And with that first down, we've seen our first of our top four seeds heading home Oklahoma State gave it everything they had here today but the defense had just played so well in the clutch let Oklahoma score on that final game winning drive and then the Cowboys were right there 15 yards away from the end zone and they couldn't score the Oklahoma Sooners are going to the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl with wins over Houston and Oklahoma State two spread offenses play of the game they choose a play from that opening those opening drives but really I'd say play of the game you take any of those plays on that final drive that the uh, Sooners had. This is what college football is all about. This is what the Bowl Championship Series playoffs are all about. And now Oklahoma will sit and wait for either Virginia Tech or Cincinnati. Roy Finch with his 200 kick return yards. Player of the game and... For the second time, they did it. This time, Oklahoma is the Bedlam game winners, and Oklahoma State is being sent home in the second round for the Sooners. This is their fourth trip to the BCS playoffs. This will be their fourth time going to the Elite Eight. How good is that? But for Bob Stoops, as good as that is, for him, that's unacceptable because they've never been to the Final Four. They've never been to the national title game. Could this year be the Sooners' year? Now they're going to have to meet up with a tough Virginia Tech or Cincinnati team in the very next round. The kick returned for a touchdown. This one really ripped the heart out of the Cowboys. Roy Finch. What a game this was here in the Alamo Dome. And, oops. Excuse me. Um, some guy in the press box, turn your cell phone off. Uh, taking a look at player numbers here, Brandon Whedon, 400 yards passing, but this right here is inexcusable. Four interceptions. On the other side of it, even though it came down to defense, that that, that chart right there, the interceptions, that's what won the cat or the Sooners. This one. Take a look at Roy Finch's numbers on the ground, 63 yards. 
for Randall. He did really well today. 82 yards on 16 attempts. Receiving-wise, Justin Blackman, 166 yards in the touchdown on his five catches. It was Kenny Stills on their side, 110 yards. And then defensive-wise, I mean, pick your winner, Gabe Lynn, Fleming, and uh, Hurst, two interceptions. Cowboys side. If only this stat would have been filled up with some ones, Oklahoma might have found themselves in this, or Oklahoma State might have found themselves in this football game. First down, I mean, all the way outclassed. They just couldn't find the end zone was the problem. They third down conversions, they destroyed them in third down conversions. They Nearly, they doubled what they had in total yards. They doubled their first down efficiency. I think the thing that maybe really hurts, you think about that missed field goal earlier in the game, albeit from really far out, 49 yards, but if that field goal is made, Oklahoma State can kick a field goal in this situation when they drive. And instead... The Cowboys are moving on to the Fiesta Bowl. Turnovers, four of them, four interceptions, and then total yards. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it from the Alamo Bowl. Let's throw some charts your way.